Howdy y'all. Hi guys. It's Angela. And Ryan. From RD Music. That's right. Your favorite mom and pop guitar shop and music lesson studio deep in the heart of Canton, Texas, which Aren't is we where we are. Yes. Right now. Correct. We are here to answer questions from people from all over the world who are not in Texas. People all over the world. Even Texans can ask questions, but. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna answer y'all's questions. Welcome to our channel. Uh, we own a little music store mm -hmm. in a small town in East Texas and we teach lessons to beginners and intermediate students and uh, we sell stuff. We do, and things. Stuff and things, <laughs> guitars and amps and strings and picks and straps and cables and things of this nature. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we shoot YouTube videos. Yay. If you're new to our channel, mm -hmm. welcome. Please Hi. give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Subscribe, I think you might get some enjoyment out of the videos. If anything. Yes, you'll get a chuckle here and there. A couple of laughs. I guarantee. <laughs> uh, this is one of our videos called Ask RNA, where yes. people from all over the world mm -hmm. ask us questions and we're gonna answer them, so check it out. There'll be time stamps in the description, so if you see a see a question you're particularly interested and in, wanna jump ahead. to that, you can go ahead and jump right onto that. But yeah. come on back, because you know sometimes we veer off target. Yes, and Stay it's on fun. <laughs> and it is fun. So let's get to our first question. You ready, Angela? Okie dokie, I'm ready, Ryan. Okay. Let's do this. First question, Penny Wisdom. Hello. Hashtag Ask RNA. Do you ever give specialized genre specific guitar lessons? Mm. With beginners, I'm sure you'd want to focus on foundations, but for an intermediate player, do you ever focus on lessons specifically mm -hmm. on one style they want to study? For example, if someone wanted to learn just thrash metal or surf or country, could you tailor your lesson plan or do you have to cover more generalized Theory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All time. Next nice question. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, for sure. We do. We do do that. We do get very specialized. Now, absolutely, with beginner students who are starting at like ground zero, right? Never played guitar. Never held a guitar. Don't know what to do. Yeah, we do kind of start off like there's. I call it building the foundation. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that no matter what style you're into, whether it's yep. thrash or blues or country or mm -hmm. folk, pop country, there's so pop many. punk, oh my gosh, uh, folk metal, uh, black metal, mm -hmm. black folk metal. Is um, that such a thing? I'm pretty sure it is. There's like 17,000 subspecies of metal, but you know. Um, so yeah, as beginners, there's certain stuff. Everybody needs to learn like kind of the physical things, like good technique, position of your hands, mm -hmm. holding the pick, you know, open chords, basic yes. chords, um, your basic scales, mm -hmm. you know, picking patterns, mm -hmm. strumming patterns. You know, there's all just that doesn't matter what you play on guitar. There's certain things you kind of everybody needs to know. Right. And we try to build that foundation with all of our beginner students, but then eventually we get to a point where it's like, all right, we kind of covered most of the foundational stuff that mm -hmm. maybe no matter what situation you get thrown into right. of different possibilities, you know, you could kind of get by if it's strumming. You have some buddies who want to play some country music, you could strum some open chords or do right. your thing, or mm -hmm. you have people who are more rock, or whatever situation you get thrown into, you could get by, you know? Right. But then we do, for sure, specialize, go, deep into whatever the student's particular interest is. So we have kiddos who, and adults, I say kiddos, but. Yeah, all ages, A lot of kiddos. Honestly. But I have, you know, kids and adults are like super into rock. Yeah. Which is great, because that's sort of my thing. That's mm -hmm. my kind of, that's the thing I like the most is rock. Right. So, if, you know, if we get into rock tunes, you know, older stuff like Zeppelin and Sabbath, or, you know, Metallica, we have a lot of people like Metallica, go figure. ACDC. I haven't really had any students come in here like super into the really off the beaten path like metal yeah, funky no, stuff. Yeah, we haven't had any, you know, obscure genres that no one really heard of that people were like, have you ever heard of, you know, and we're like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, we've, it's usually pretty mainstream. I mean. For the most part. Most people, I mean, there are some bands that we've not heard of, but the genre that those bands play in, we have heard of those genres. You know what I'm saying? Like when you were saying thrash, folk, yeah, grunge, bra, whatever that grunge. was, whatever that was, um, they never, you know, they never, you know, say I would like Norwegian 
you know, death kitty metal. I don't know, whatever it's yeah. like, you know, no one's ever really come in and just but, popped out a genre that we've never heard of, but we've had plenty of bands that people have mentioned that we've never heard of yeah. in the genres that we like. And there's a lot of things if you really study your technique mm -hmm. that cross over. Like there's stuff that speed metal guys do that bluegrass guys do. Right. It's like the same technique to play some crazy fast bluegrass stuff is the same thing you do for some crazy fast like metal picking things. So right. there are certain things that it doesn't matter the genre. Mm -hmm. The actual technique used to play that stuff is sort of cross cross genre. Mm -hmm. You know, people get all funky about that. Like, well, I you know do this or I'm like, yeah. If you boil it down to the physical movements that are going on mm -hmm. with the right hand and the left hand, the genre doesn't even really matter sometimes. You know, maybe there's a lot more palm muting in this genre than there is this genre, but you know, there's, that, yeah. But what we do is we'll go into a specific. All the basics are the yeah. same. It's, it's like e building a sentence. Yeah. It's easy enough to find a song that the student is into that, like, here's the technique. So let's just use this section of the song to build this technique that you're struggling with. Right. But, but yeah. We do that vocally too. It's like, okay, you like, you know, Linda Etter. Which is one of the songs we I learned. We were practicing last. Was it yesterday? Probably yesterday. Yes. Oh my gosh! Yes, you it gave was. a bunch of vocal lessons yesterday. Yes, it was yesterday. It was a long day yesterday, um, and there are certain things that singing a Linda Etter song helped pinpoint certain areas where she was weak at, and that helped develop certain things. So where if she sang a Taylor Swift song, we would never touch it. Um, my, the, it's a mother daughter that I teach and the daughter, she was like, can we do, you know, this song? It's, I love rock and roll. And I'm like, and she loves singing it and I get it. It's a great song mm -hmm. and it's so catchy. It's fun. That's why it stood the test of time all of these years. Um, but melodically and vocally, there's no stretch at all. Very monotone. It is. It just stays because what everybody likes is the guitar riff mm -hmm. in the song. Yeah. So that's what catches you is that heavy, just driving guitar part. But if I was like, okay, no, we're gonna go sing some Jesse J, which that's the other song that we I picked for her because there's a lot of runs and trills and having to sustain a note. There, there, it's a completely different genre. Jesse J is extremely pop, R and B pop type music, and Joan Jett is metal, you know, or classic pop, rock, pop metal, pop rock, pop rock, yeah. But still, very different women, very different vocals, but because... But and the they, pop thing is way more difficult to sing than the rock thing. Yeah. yeah. Rock tends to be very monotone yes, sometimes. Yes, for the most the part. The melodies are very I monotone. I mean, a lot of, actually, the women tend to be more monotone than the men. Really? Yeah. A lot of the women singers, they just usually... They have a... Sometimes they'll have that one burst of a loud note, but for the most part, especially the older classic rock men have those high notes that they'll fit in there. It's like, <laughs> what? True. The spandex were just <laughs> extra tight those decades. And they were able, and you never heard that in the women rockers. Yeah, that's you true. You never heard that in women. Well, Most men, of the men women are very rock. competitive. Yes. It's a very like, I'm going to hit higher notes than the other guy. If, you know. Yeah. And I'm going to play guitar faster. Right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So that's how, uh, even in vocals, that's how it changes. Yeah. We do specialize. There, there are things that, that cover all yeah. techniques. But then, yes, for sure, we do specialize. So, mm -hmm. Great question, Penny Wisdom. A uh, quick commercial break. The thanks to our sponsors, RNA Music, for sponsoring this video. <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> if you would like to support RNA Music in some way, if you have enjoyed our videos over the last 10 years or think what we're doing, teaching kids music is great, uh, you can go get you a limited edition RNA Music tee that we brought back. Link in the description below. Go to our Teespring store. You can get any of the other logo tees, but we also have the limited one that has been out of print for a long time. Yeah, we brought like it back four years. for a brief time. Get your RNA Music tee. I need to get one. You should. Don't you have one? It had holes. Have one? It got holes in it. You wore it I out. Wore it literally out. I have a couple. I only had one. I have a couple from the original printing back in the day. So, oh. go get you one. Back to our regular programming. <laughs> Hope y'all enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Next question, DJ. I don't think it's your cousin, DJ. Is, is DG. DG. Yeah. No, it's DG. Yeah. Sorry. 
D I, I saw D J underscore G. D Isn't underscore G says, by the way, have you ever checked out or heard reviews about diamond amplifiers? They're out of Texas and have a domestic and import line. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. We were dealers. So yes, yes. We, we have yeah. heard of them. They're actually not headquartered in Texas anymore. Neither is Diamond Guitars. Yeah. So they've been bought out by new ownership and they're not headquartered in Texas. Yeah, not a, anymore. yeah. They were. They were. And we visited the headquarters and if you go watch the videos from had about, some great barbecue. If you go watch the videos from about four years ago, you'll you'll see uh, our history with Diamond. So Yeah, there you go. Yes. Next question. Just fun guitar. New questions. What animals in the U.S. are protected by law? Interesting. Two, what is the last track on the charts that you liked? Ooh. Mm. And three, do you like bare knuckle pickups? Three questions. I don't know why I read that. Bare knuckle push-ups. <laughs> it's like bare knuckle. Some, some Jackie. Was it? Not Jackie. Was it Bruce Lee? Bruce Lee. Bruce These Lee are like yes. <laughs> fingertip push-ups. That's yes, the Bruce Or Jean-Claude with the, the spread eagle. Bare knuckle push-ups. Yes. <laughs> close, close, close. These are hard. Yeah. You push ups like that. Oh, oh I know. Because you have to spread that. It makes me hurt. Just think about it. Yeah. Um, what animals are <laughs> in the U.S. are protected by law? That's a deep question, Chris. It Last week we talked about opossums. Yes. Uh, in the You're U.S. On a, on a, so we're on an was animal his question. That was the, it was <laughs> about opossums. Yeah. Um, man, that list is like too long to go through. It's, it's it's literally massive. divided into because we looked it up because I knew there was quite a few. I, I knew a few off the top but of my head, but when we went to look it up, it was like it's divided into mammal, reptile, reptile. amphibian, bird. <laughs> it's it's marsupials. It's, yeah, it's it's it like saying what animals long in character. what animals in the continent of Africa are right. protected. We have a lot of species of animal. Yeah, and just in the United States. Forget, you know, yeah. North America, you know, Canada, Central America. Yeah, it includes like fish. Yeah, and turtles, sea lions, turtles, like bats, bats, bats. Bats and rats, certain kinds. Yeah, they're because they're endangered. We have a lot of endangered because of hunting. Just mm -hmm. like in the UK, you have a lot of people who love to hunt and and even because climate change and having big cities in certain areas and pollution and population and blah, 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 blah. You have some animals because of deforestation and all that stuff that get kind of wiped out. Yeah. But um, the it top is ones that are here um, that are extremely protected are bears, certain bears. I think grizzly bear. Mm -hmm. is. I don't think you can even hunt a mm -hmm. grizzly bear. Certain or mountain black lions. bear. Certain lion, mountain certain, lions. Like mm -hmm. you have to get... Like the park rangers have to go take care of it. Yeah. If there's a problem. Yes. If they've gone out of control, if they've killed, or if they've come too close to um, human population, then there are certain precautions that game wardens and um, forest mm -hmm. rangers and people like that have to. Well, you get special care. permits, like, you know, I know this happens with like big, huge mountain lions that are like freaking huge. I mean, you think tigers are big? Yeah. There's mountain lions here that are ridiculous, bigger than tigers. Mm hmm. And, um, but they're protected, but you can have one, like an old one that's basically killing off the younger population. So mm -hmm. you have one old Tomcat giant mountain lion that's killing off the younger ones. So it itself is hurting their own, its own species. And so they'll have to go take care of that one. And, you know, sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. park, not park rangers, but what am I thinking? Game wardens. Game wardens will do it, but sometimes they can also have, you know, a private individual can do it, but you have to get a license or a permit from the game wardens yeah, or from the government to go do it. Because, like, we have a problem animal, I mean, we could go do it, but if a citizen wants to pay us to go do it. Yeah, who is a hunter, a big is, game hunter who knows their stuff. Not just he's not gonna go get, yes, blue some, collar, white some, collar, you hi. know, Joe Plummer who goes out there and just like, I like to hunt, you know, and just shoots co hogs from his yeah, porch. Yeah, yeah. They won't let you do that. You have to be seasoned because that thing will kill you. <laughs> yes. There's a huge liability from it. But it, it's more of a, they do it to help control the populations. Right. You know, so, the, but, and we were talking that, you know, but almost all animals are protected at some point mm -hmm. here. So even like deer uh, are protected part of the year. Yeah. <laughs> like you just can't go Right deer. now they're not. Right now there is no protection. <laughs> well, there's some protection. We said that because even yeah. though right now it's deer season. 
you can and so you can go hunt deer and you yeah. know we have we have students who are like hunters and they have hunting leases and, and they go and they kill their deer and they're like hey we're gonna have a venison for like four months now mm -hmm. you know but there's still a limit like you can't just go kill 150 deer by yourself right that's not legal even right. though it's legal right now to hunt them yeah. you have to have a license the game wardens will be on you. and there's still there's still a limit yes so in a sense, even during hunting season, they're still protected. There's a limit on how many you kill and there's a limit how old the deer must be mm. in order for you to kill it. Like it has to have a certain amount of points on its antlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In order they don't for you to kill a Bambi. To, yeah, they won't allow you to do that. Um, they, they get really, you can get fined quite a bit. Even if you have a license, even if it is deer season. Right. They're still come out and bring limits. out their tape measure and they'll measure those. If they know you've been doing anything illegal. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So Aiden was in his 4-H class, and we were actually talking about game wardens and how there's actually, they have an actual police force that um, protects animals and cows and cattle wrestlers. So there's like this whole thing in the state of Texas where you, you know, uh, can't go out and just, because it's an actual problem. People actually do, they do do that. <laughs> Not like any do, old, do. You, you do do that. Yeah. People are still rustling cattle yes. to this day, stealing yes. other people's cows. Exactly. And there's and there's laws that obviously protect the cows, protect the ranchers, protect the homeowners. And now I remembered what I was going to say. So <laughs> we were talking about, um, it. The, he was he brought up the fact that, uh, about buzzards. Oh, yeah, Buzzards yeah, yeah. are protected because obviously they're uh, nature's garbage men. They go out and they clean up the mess that happens through the roadkill and just natural. But also buzzards on per, um, ranchers' properties can be a big hazard towards calves that are born. Yeah, because newborn they baby come, calves. Newborn baby calves, they'll come in, or even like mama cows who are laying down, preparing to give birth, they look like they're kind of dying. You have the smell of blood and they'll come in. And so ranchers have the permission to shoot well one guy he has having issues with um a buzz some buzzers groups and when you're talking about buzzer it's not like one or two a single buzzer when they come around it will be 20 to 30 of those things especially if it's a large enough carcass it is and they're scary okay those things are frightening period they have razor sharp <laughs> beaks and they tear through flesh okay that's my big thing is buzzers i hate buzzards but a game warden got called out or, or saw him or something like that. And he was like, look, I have a calf out here and the buzzards are coming near. And he's like, he's like, what I need you to do is step back into your property before you shoot that thing. Because if it's on your property, you have permission to do it. But you, you can't. can't just go off wandering through the woods and, oh, look, a buzzer and kill it. Right. You just can't. Especially if it doesn't propose a threat. Yeah. If it's just sitting to, on a tree. Yes. If it's eating your cow, yes. you can kill it. You can kill it. And especially if you have some buckshot or some bird spray, you can, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of laws about what you can and can't kill. Yeah, here, tons. And a lot of reasons for it. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Almost every animal is protected yeah. in the United States. We aren't a bunch, even though the media likes to say about Americans that we're just a bunch of gun toting shoot at anything type people, there are laws and there are high authority people that law enforcement that enforce those laws because again fishing has a season hunting have a season dove duck deer yeah. elk they all have seasons where you're allowed to and the number is limited the age of the animal is mm -hmm. limited and certain things like that and the rest of the year if you do it you will go to jail or get yeah. fined hefty and since heck and it, this is not to get too political but this is the thing that sometimes people in other countries don't understand because your country is not the same as ours and your, dem your demographic is not the same. Your <laughs> wildlife population is not the same. Yeah. And uh, I run into this. We have a lot of friends, you know, mm -hmm. and followers. I have a lot of friends in England. And then you start talking about guns. I'm like, you obviously never grew up in the country in Texas. Yeah. To so talk about, you don't need a gun. And I'm like, yeah. you never grew up on a ranch. Yeah. With animals that we'll can kill. literally kill you. Mm -hmm. And will hunt you. Yeah. Oh, and hunt you. Yes. <laughs> you think They'll you're hunting hunt. something. It's hunting you. And they will kill you. Yes. Then they can, you know, it's like, you don't have, some countries don't have any wildlife population that are a literal threat to your life. 
Yes. Other than or Africa, your lifestyle. Or Australia. Yeah. You know, but even then, like, wild boar will come up and destroy everything. You have fox, we have bobcats, we have coyote dog mixes, we have... There's a whole bunch. Pan- I mean, I mean, that's just like, even in East Texas, you're not talking about when you go up north and they get bigger the nor- more north you go. Um, wolves are protected, though. Wolves are 100% protected, and bald eagles are obviously protected because yeah. they're the state, um, country's bird. There's a lot. This is a whole topic by itself. But, yeah, uh, and each state has their own bird and animal, and they are protected. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't just kill them. Ours is the Mockingbird, right? Yes. Yes. Don't you love Texas? Oh my gosh. Yes. All our, right. And Armadillo is this Texas. Armadillos. Is this Texas whatever. <laughs> Texas state animal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Anyways, that's a ton of stuff about the animals, but it's a lot. It's, inf- it's good information. Yeah. It's, yeah. You Google it. It's uh, a lot. This is not just gear hour. It's ask yeah, yeah. R-N-A. Ask R-N-A. And you can see our perspective from someone who lives where we live. Where we live. Okay. (laughs) What's the last track in the charts you like? Question number two from Just Fine Guitar. What is the last track in the charts that you liked? Hmm. I don't know. Probably one of the singles off the the new Alter Bridge. I'm sure it charted. Actually, I'm pretty sure it did. It, It made it into the charts. If you're a big enough band, it makes it in... You know. I don't listen to anything that's on the radio right now. I don't listen to the radio either, but I know for a fact that their album charted on like iTunes or, yeah. or whatever, or, be, or top whatever new rock thing. Yeah. But that's not where I listen to it. I follow them on YouTube, and I'm like, oh, their new album's come out. Let me go. And then, Oh, they released a single on YouTube, mm-hmm. so that I listen to it. So probably one of the one of the two singles first off the new Ultra Bridge record, which oh. I can't tell you their names. I know. But... Um, Natalie Grant and Corin Hawthorne speak the name because they're up for a Grammy, so they, char- oh. they obviously charted. Obviously charted if you're up for a Grammy award. So. Yeah, so there you go. speak the name. Do you like bare knuckle pickups? I've never played them, so I don't know. The only experience I have with bare knuckles. Who put who who uses them in their guitars? Uh, Rabia does. He has a new signature. But uh, what's his face from Periphery? Uh-huh. Uh, what's what, his what face? guitar is it? His what's his face? Guitar, or it's is a it... Jackson guitar. Okay. Um, Misha Mansour. Misha uses bare knuckles. They're popular. Mm-hmm. Wormy. Oh God! You po- I thought you pointed to my leg. What? Is it a worm? Yes. You got a little creepy crawly on the floor over there. See so... Texas stuff everywhere. <laughs> uh, we're gonna let him go though. Yeah. He's it's not posing a threat. It's just a millipede. The millipede. Centipede would be a different story. Yeah, no, we kill those suckers. Yeah, they're scary. You're gonna die, centipede. Oh my god. Um, there's a lot of rock, mostly rock and metal guys using bare knuckles. But mm-hmm. you know, it's one of those things. Again, yeah. listening to a record that was recorded with those pickups or a YouTube video where they're playing them and it's it's been you know EQ'd and like you know mixed and mastered and stuff. I'm like. Mm-hmm. Do they really sound any better than any other pickup out there? Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't really be able to make the decision without just playing one in person through an amp. But uh, they look cool. I will say that. They mm-hmm. definitely look cool. And, you know, the bands and the guys that I know of that play them play really well. So you could probably play anything and make it sound good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're a little pricey. Yeah. They're expensive. Yeah. And that's the thing, and they're kind of boutique-ish, and there's there's a bit of hype around them and all that, and uh, you know, I wouldn't buy one. Like I'm not like, ooh, yeah. I'm gonna buy one for that kind of money. I'm like, nah, that's fine. Right. You know, <laughs> if I bought a guitar that already had them in there, I'd probably keep them, I guess. But you know, there's you can make there's a lot of pickups on the market that sound great and get the job done, and when it comes to actually recording your music Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of things you do in mixing and mastering that I think the pickup thing sort of becomes irrelevant Mm -hmm. to a degree I mean yeah they make a difference but I think we make too much of a difference sometimes but that's just you know that's just my thought I think we over I was just in the recording studio Monday recording drums and stuff and it's kind of like Musicians, we have a tendency to obsess over gear and obsess right. over if I get this, if I just get this amp or I get this guitar, or I get this pickup or I get these strings. Right? Right. We obsess over the minutia of that stuff, and then sometimes we forget to just play music. 
right <laughs> or make music or write some music yes. you know it's the creation of the music becomes secondary to I can, the, I can the second gear, that the gear that we get hung up on and I'm talking about myself too yes right? I mean I'm, I'm talking about him too <laughs> I'm super guilty of that so I, I think we worry about gear too much which keeps stores you know in business right you know gear retailers keeps them in business because we obsess about gear but mm -hmm. You know, which has its place. I'm not mm -hmm. saying all gear is created equal. It's not, but you know, sometimes we just need to play. We just need to play more guitar. <laughs> yes. And not worry about the gear as much. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Chris. Next question, Ken Rogers, hashtag opossum. I just watched El Camino on Netflix. As a Breaking Bad fan, I thought it was fantastic. Have you guys seen it yet? And what do you think of The Mandalorian on Disney Plus? Hmm. I have not seen El Camino yet, but I was a huge Breaking Bad fan. It was amazing. She was. The nursing home scene with the bomb. What? What? That was amazing. So um, is so, that like a sequel? Yes. It's about the young man who was in cahoots. I can't remember their names because it's been forever. Because you were. It was, we lived here and I had i've raised children since then it's been a while <laughs> um but he's like come back from like is this after that because mm -hmm. oh, better yeah. call saul is before this yes right. correct better yes. call saul is like i like better call saul too that's really yeah. good so yeah i'm a big breaking bads pre and sequel but you haven't watched it are you gonna watch no, this no it's on my list yeah no i want list. to i want to have time to sit and actually enjoy it and i haven't had like real Plus, I got into The Mentalist for some weird reason. I just really like that show. I never watched it when it was on television, so, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. Well, as far as what do you think of The Mandalorian on Disney Plus? The Plus. The Plus. Uh, we just got it last night. We did. Like, last night at, like, 10 p.m. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and sign up for this Disney thing. Yes. Really just because I wanted to watch The Mandalorian. Right. Because I've, I've watched all the little commercials for it and the previews. I'm like, this looks really good. I want a stupid freaking Disney. Satan's channel. Because I kind of hate what they did to Star Wars, honestly. <laughs> it's so addictive. They pretty much destroyed Star Wars, in my mind. Yeah. But. They didn't destroy the first ones. No, they well, no. They destroyed the future of the franchise. Yeah, just, you know, 7, 8, and 9. Yeah. Episode 7, 8, and 9, they've screwed. The potential of what they could have done. That's yeah. What they now, I knew that John Favreau is directing and writing all the stuff for mm -hmm. The Mandalorian, which is like, you know, he did a great job on, oh, you know, Iron Man and right. all the Marvel stuff. Right. So it's right. like, okay, maybe. I trust you. Maybe put maybe. a. Finally put a guy who knows what he's doing in charge of a Star Wars product. Right. So, uh, so we watched two episodes. Yeah, we watched episode one and two of Mandalorian last night, uh -huh. like at midnight. Yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were up late last night. Um, and episode three is out right now, today, which we're yes. letting the boys watch That's the first two. The boys two right are now. at home watching The now, boys right are at home watching. right now watching The Mandalorian, episode uh -huh. one and two. They yeah. can't watch three until we get home. But um, I liked it. I was like, it's a little slow. It. Yeah, but this morning when I was, after sleeping on it, Yes, because like, we were tired. So yeah, yeah. That's I was like, it was okay. Yeah. But I think because people have to, it's amazing. Oh my God, it's so amazing. I'm like, okay, great, cool. I'm like, was it amazing? It was just the last couple of Star Wars movies, literally hot garbage. That even if it's just okay, yeah. it's like, it's amazing. I was like, is it amazing? Yeah. I mean, I liked it. It's like eating I something really it. bitter. And then something like some ice cream afterwards. You're like, this is so sweet. No, not really. It's just your taste buds got used to the bitterness of the last thing. And now this is, you know. But if you had something because equally as sweet. it's not hot garbage. It's not going to be that sweet. Are my perceptions skewed because Mandalorian is not hot garbage? I honestly like the approach of, because you know I'm wearing my Star Wars and Marvel yeah, yeah. My whole Disney like collection. Yeah. My, um, the fact that I love the fact that they went towards, and this isn't any spoilers at any in any kind. The way they filmed it is very um, spaghetti western. Yeah. Well, it was that's one of the things I read was that the way that they cinematically did things mm -hmm. was very similar to four, five, and six. Like even the way that the the screen wipes would happen and the transitions mm -hmm. between shots mm -hmm. was 
very much in the same vein. Yeah, but the music. That. But yeah, very, it's very spaghetti western. Very spaghetti. It was like like John music Wayne came in Star on. Wars. No, it was like Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood Star Wars. That's what John I'm Wayne never did spaghetti western. That's right. So, which is very derogatory statement if you think about it. it kind of is Italian. racist. Yeah, I just now thought about that. I'm sorry, so Italian. racist. I sorry, apologize. Ike. Sorry, sorry, Paul. Yeah, Paul's barely Italian. Yeah. He's not even watching this, so we can say stuff about it if we want to. <laughs> and John Piss, <laughs> all of our Italian friends. But um, I liked it because that speaks to, because I'm a huge, Clint I mean, Eastwood. I love Clint Eastwood, old Clint Eastwood movies. Westerns, yeah. Yes. Hang Them High, Fistful of Dollars, A Few Dollars More. Outlaw Josie Wales. Yes. All of them. Dying I have of them living, all boy. on DVD. <laughs> um, so, Is that on Disney Plus? Yes, I am the perfect girl. True story. Um, <laughs> so uh, I like I did I like the music was very good bad ugly da, la, la, sounding to it yeah. had like the edge to it. Yeah. So I I like that aspect of it because you made it made you think because he was like this when he stands in the doorway and he's like he has this very Clint Eastwood poncho. I'm coming here to bring the law. You know yeah, I don't yeah. care. I don't give a crap about anybody. And I have this. Well, obviously, he has a straight face because he wears a helmet the whole time. He has a straight, you know, it's very expressionless, very monotone, that expre no expression, just like Clint Eastwood. So, I think that's where probably they got the idea of it. It's very um, a fistful of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Or hang him high. Uh, it was interesting because on the first episode, he was very like, "Oh man, this guy's a baddie. Don't yeah. mess with him." And then in the second episode, he's like, "Oh man, he's not that bad." No. Like he's, he's like just like a normal guy who just is like, eh, this is a job. Yeah, he was kinda like <laughs> he was he was struggling a bit in episode two. And I'm yeah. like, oh, he's having a tough time getting this job done. Yeah. I thought Mandalorians were just total bad A's all the time. Maybe not. But you gotta have some character ups and downs. Yes. So that's probably what they're doing is ups and downs and yeah. you know. Giving little peeks into his past. Yeah, into yeah. what kind of real person he is, where you actually love him, because you don't want to detach too much from him. <laughs> you you know want to like the main character, but you, you know. do, and you want to give some depth to them. Yes, you know. especially for people who have no idea what a Mandalorian is. Yeah, or have completely forgot about Boba Fett and Jango. Yeah, like completely. Who can so. forget about that? People who never. And I have really to go to look because I'm like I can't remember now because I don't know that Jango was a real Mandalorian. I've got to go research that because someone's saying it's like, well, he wasn't really. He was just someone who used their armor, mm -hmm. you know. Because he liked their stuff. Because it's super cool and it's super. But I don't know the awesome. flashback that kind of made him look like he was. They were the same race. Could be. I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, spoiler. Sorry. Spoilers. Sorry. Sorry. There might be flashbacks. Yeah. You're yeah. fine. You're fine. It's not much. Okay. I mean, we're gonna watch the rest of it. Oh yeah. I mean. Heck yeah, that's good. We'll see. We'll see what it's happens. It's worth seeing where the where the character develops. Yeah, and how they. I mean, they have to tie this into the. Mm -hmm. But see, Disney has opened this huge door now, especially since they own with Pixar and mm. obviously just Disney, and then um, Marvel and Star Wars universe and National Geographic. They have all that on there. And if they're anything, if they take any cue from Netflix and Hulu, because Hulu has their own original series yeah. now, they'll have so many original series, but they have, like, so much. There's a lot of playground in the Star Wars universe that you can make a story out of. Star Wars universe and Marvel universe. So, honestly, they could just be, I mean, yeah. you don't have to watch regular television for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. So, there you go. That's what we think. Take your leave it. Take it. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> Next question. Tracy Johnson. Okay, Angela and Ryan. I seen Tina Turner and Whitney Houston in a concert back in the 80s, and I enjoyed Tina more than Whitney mm -hmm. because of attitude and sincere thanks that we were there to see her in concert, mm -hmm. whereas Whitney, I thought, felt it was our privilege to see them. Question. Does attitude mean a lot to you both when you go to a concert? I look someone... I took someone to see Whitney, so I didn't leave, though I really wanted to. All right. So you mean the attitude of the performer? performer. Mm. Does like, that count? Yeah. Like, I guess he's saying Tina was, like, really appreciated the fans being there. Mm -hmm. You know, well, and she was, was like, there for the fans. And like, Whitney was more like, here. they're here for me. She goes, of course you're here. 
Huh. Where else would you be? Because I'm awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yes, attitude matters sure. immensely. I'm all about that. 100%. 100%. I can't stand someone who's just like, yeah, of course you're here. I'm awesome. I can't stand that. And I will honestly just shut you off. I'm like, who? No, I haven't listened to their music. I don't care for it. <laughs> like, I don't. The only person I give an exception to is Billy Joel. Uh. But I'll listen to his old stuff. Like, I don't think I'd ever really go to one of his concerts. I mean, yeah. I'd like to go, but I would love to have gone when I was like 10. Yeah. You know? Not now. Like 80s Billy Joel to be able to sit at Madison Square Garden and then watch him play Piano Man. And, you know, I would have been like heaven as a kid. Because I knew I was a fan of him then as a kid. So I yeah. would have totally understood the significance of where, you know, where I was and who I was listening to, you know. Um, but, yeah. Um, I'm that way with even worship leaders. I'm like, oh, God, you're performing. Uh, I'm out. You know, <laughs> where's the coffee me. bar? <laughs> I don't. I don't mm -mm. Yeah, I'm all about that. I love it when people are communicating and talking, shaking hands with people and genuine, or when they sit on the edge of the stage and they start talking to people, you know? I love like watching old Freddie Mercury concerts when he's just like so in love with the fact that people are there to see him. You know, he's mm -hmm. just like, oh my gosh, look at you guys. You're so, right, be you're so beautiful. You know, like he's just yeah, yeah. in awe that this many people would actually come listening to him because he never thought of himself that right. that great. Um, Elton John's the same way. Yeah. He'll compliment the people. It's like, oh, you're so beautiful. Look at you. And, you know, point people out in the crowd and do stuff like that. Yeah, they recognize so that the audience, without this audience, you would not have a career. Exactly. So you need to like... He's like, I'm making this special for you. Because love on the audience because they make your life possible. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. I like that a lot. So, yeah. That sucks because those are two like epic women mm -hmm. to go see. Congratulations for you to see those two women in, in person. That's pretty I awesome. I mean, Tina Turner is still rocking out. She's, I mean, she's the epitome of Black Don't Crack. <laughs> She's like the, at the apex of Black Don't Crack. Her and Cicely Tyson are like, what? How old are you? 105? Damn. You know, like they're, <laughs> they're just beautiful women. Like, it's ridiculous. Tina Turner's legs were actually like um, insured Yeah. not too long ago for like a million dollars a leg. So if she loses one, she gets a million dollars? <laughs> yeah, like, so people protect her legs. Like, she goes to therapy because she's known because she wears those high-waisted pants and, like, oh, yeah, fringe yeah. and stuff. And people just, and she does that dance where she's shaking her legs and stuff. Yeah. Did she still do that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm tired. No, I watched her and it was, like, her 60th birthday because she's, like, dad's age. She's, yeah. like, 70-something now. But it was her 60th birthday. And she was just running down that stage and stuff. I was like... Why do you, why is your body better than mine and I'm 20? <laughs> you know, like, that's not fair. Because she but works at it. She does. She works she her works behind, it. literally she works her behind off. She works it on. Yes. And she works it up. <laughs> did I just say that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you did. But Whitney. Oh. The answer machine got it. Just another junk phone call. Yes. So Whitney, though, um, she started going downhill after her third album. I think really, honestly, after she did The Preacher's Wife. I don't know what happened in that season. I think that's when she met Bobby Brown. Probably Bobby Brown. And then right before she did the soundtrack, soundtrack for um, Prince of Egypt, when she sang with Mariah Carey with that, that was powerful. But... You can just kind of tell, and people were talking about how they kind of argued with each other whenever, you know, like Mariah Carey was in the room, and then Whitney Houston came in, and everybody was swarming towards Mariah Carey, and because you know she was really big then, right. like still, still really big then, and everybody was just like, oh my gosh, Mariah, 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 and then Whitney Houston walked in, and everybody like walked away from Mariah Carey, went over to Whitney Houston because she's like the queen. Right. You know, she she is, you know, what Beyonce is now, back then, and was. Um, but people were saying how Whitney was kind of like, yeah, of course, you know. Yeah. Not like, oh, guys, no, 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 thank you so much. It's about the project. It's not about me. 
No, it was almost right. like a literal queen walking into the room. She's very full of herself. Yeah. Which I, you know, you think, oh, that's just rumors. But then when they start just escalating a little bit and then obviously the end of her life, she, she just, you know, took a nosedive, unfortunately, bless her heart. Mm -hmm. But those people, sometimes it just swells your head and sometimes. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It, 100%. And I hate being told what to do at concerts. That That's one thing that does tick me off. Yeah. Some bands are like, cool, I want to see a pit right now. You guys get up. And I'm like, dude, no. I'm, I paid money to be here. Yeah. If I want to stand here and stare, like, that's okay. what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. You don't get to tell me what to do when I paid money to get in here. Some people want to jump around and run and mosh and do all that kind of crazy stuff. And that's sure, how sure. you show excitement and all Why that. Not? But for me, I'm more of like, just stare and watch like, oh my God, look what he just played. Right. Right? Let me and just take it all in. I just want to watch this thing and just be like, wow. I yeah. don't want to run and punch someone in the face and jump because you said jump. You don't get to tell me how, how to jump. Uh, yeah, can we get... Oh, oh. So can don't tell me what to do at the show. Mm -hmm. I, that ticks me off. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, because I'm like, people respond okay. differently. So that annoys me. But I was going to say, <laughs> one of the best ones I've been to, I've seen them a couple times, was Metallica. Because mm -hmm. they were super cool. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that's one of the favorite things I, I think this last they time I saw them. Yeah, they're like, hey, you guys. And it's smart, too. Like, James is real smart. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know we're what? We're 60 years old and He's you like, still love we're us. We're here. We're in this giant arena that's packed full. And it's like, we don't, you know, he didn't say all that stuff. But it's like, hey, you guys, you know, we love you. Mm -hmm. And listen, we're here at a Metallica show. And it's like, we don't care who you voted for. Mm -hmm. We don't care who you didn't vote for. We don't care what you eat. What you don't eat, we don't care what color you are. Mm -hmm. We don't care about any of that crap. What we care about is you're here and we're here and we love heavy music and let's celebrate heavy music together right now. And I'm like, you're a freaking genius. Smart. Right? Because you didn't alienate anybody here. Because you know, in this giant arena of 80,000 people, not so everybody's. Many. Oh you my know, gosh. They all like heavy music, but not, you know, you, not everybody eats meat. We're here for the music. Not everybody's, you know. I'm not going to eat the music. Religious or non-religious or we'll Democrat or Republican or, or whatever. The they don't give a crap. They're like, hey, yeah. we're just here for the music. Yes. Shut like, up and sing. Super smart. <laughs> super smart. Yes. That's how you do it. You make you make the entire crowd. And everybody was like, yeah. And they're like, because everybody was included. And like, hey, everybody here that's here right now, we love you and we're glad that you're here. And let's just do this. And like, that's how you do it, man. You yeah. make your, you know, make them happy. So anyways, great question, Tracy Johnson. Yes, attitude means a lot. It sure does. Next question. Cool beans. Paul Ludwikowski. Mm -hmm. I think I did that right. It says, on CMG Guitars, what is the difference between the Ashley and the Ashley Cream City since it seems they are both the same price Enjoy the holiday season? Well, they are not the same price, Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ashley Cream City is $400 more than the regular Ashley. Yeesh. So they're not the same. That's why it's Cream City. Cream City. It's got... Yeah, cream uh, on top. A little extra. Yeah. A little extra. The uh, Cream City is fully bound, so it has like fully binding. Like not reveal binding. Okay. But binding on the body and I binding on means. the neck. Not the reveal binding, but actual... I know what that means. Binding. Binding, which is a lot more time and labor intensive to put in. It also oh, yeah, has... I imagine so. Also has inlays on it, which the stock... The stock actually doesn't. Mm -hmm. The stock Ashley is like seven nine nine, no binding of any kind, no reveal binding, no inlays, no nothing, just very stock plain Jane, as plain Jane as they can make it. Yeah, but pretty. Point. Yeah, but nice. Yeah, and a great guitar. But there's a difference. It's about a four hundred dollar upcharge for the Cream City. Cream sickle. Cream sickle, the cream sickle, and it's because it's fully bound and has um, inlays and stuff. I don't know if the I think the pickups might be different. I think. I have to go look at the website, but I think the Cream City one may have USA Frog Dogs in it, hmm. but I'm not 100 percent sure. Mm -hmm. But I do know it's mostly about the binding and the inlay and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, they are different, and they are different prices. Thanks for the question, Paul. Next question, good one here from Psycho G. How do guitar companies justify saying that 500 to 1,000 dollar guitars is middle of the road pricing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, and bring out the Hellman's, bring out the best, French mustard, and Hunt's ketchup. <laughs> That's All right. Name brands throw out yeah, right there. Yeah, we were mm -hmm. talking about mustard or mayo last week. Yep. Um, how do they 
call five hundred to a thousand dollars in the middle of the road? Well, because cheap would be like two hundred dollars, mm -hmm. one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars. There are guitars out there for one hundred fifty to two hundred bucks. That would definitely be cheap. And there are guitars out there that are fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, ten thousand dollars, five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's getting kind of excessive. But that's they're, luxurious. Yeah, yeah, like I mean, I've seen a fifteen thousand dollar PRS. Mm -hmm. So yeah, five hundred bucks definitely would be a steal. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean. But you're getting out there in like custom shop, crazy stuff. But there are quite a few guitars in the $2,000 range. Mm -hmm. Like USA, you know. So there's a lot of Gibsons and Les Pauls and Fenders mm -hmm. and Ernie Ball Music Mans. We just had one here. I mean, there's a lot that's sitting at $2,000, $2,100, $2,200 price point. Right. Which are like not custom shop, but just mm -hmm. standard production guitars. There are standard production guitars in that two grand market mm -hmm. so a thousand dollars compared to you know standard production two thousand dollars would be mid-priced i guess this is how i see it you driving down the road you think cars okay driving down the road most of the cars that you see are going to be chevys fords toyotas hondas dodge middle range they're not luxury they're in the middle road but that's the majority of the cars that you're going to see on the road. You're not going to see a lot of Lamborghinis or what are they called? Ferraris. Ferraris or what's the other one that people like? Um, Martin. Ashton, Ashton, Ma Ashton, Ashton Martins. Martin. You're not going to see a lot of those. I mean, you might Bentley's. once in a while, but you're not going to see a lot of those parked in cars when you drive around suburbia. Mm -hmm. Middle of the road would be what most of the middle class, most middle range people can afford. So that's why they can call that that because that's what usually what most people can afford. Is, the majority. Is the majority of the people. Just like you're not going to see a lot of clunkers, you know, $1,000 cars, $5,000 cars running around, driving around the road. They're you out might, there. They're out there. People have them because it's all people can't afford, but they're not what most people can afford. Because most people, when they think of their car, they think I need to have something that's reliable that will be able to get my family from here to there that I won't have to work on that much. So I need to spend a little bit more money, but I'm not going to buy a Lamborghini. Yeah. You know, even though and I might be able to afford it. You can buy a Corvette. It, uh, yeah. But, but a I'm Corvette not gonna, is still nowhere it, close to Lamborghini. It's at the top of the range. I mean, yeah. there's some trucks that are more than Corvettes, but yeah, that's true. you have, you know, but that's still the middle of the range. Same thing goes with the guitars. There are some that are $200. They're basically for people who might not want to spend that much or give it to their kid because they might break it and they don't, they don't want to invest that much money. But they want pe people who are like, I want to learn this. I'm going to spend time on this. I want to be able to record some music with this. But I'm not going to go buy a signature signed Eric Clapton original 1960s Gibson, whatever, or Telecaster, yeah. whatever he played. You're not going to, they're not going to spend 15000 So middle range is, you know, when people's, we have tons of people that come in here and over the years that are like, oh, it's only $600. Because they have a seven seventy thousand dollar truck outside park. Yeah. So five hundred dollars is you know for a guitar that's like oh that's not bad. Yeah. You know. And I'm like this is kind of middle of the road. You yeah, know, it's, it's about not, right. Not a pro level instrument. No. But it's not a beginner instrument either. Yeah. It's kind of in the middle. What the average person would be willing to spend right. on a guitar. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah. Is that a good analogy? That's good. It's good. I'm, I'm not sure how to explain it any better than that, but I'm just curious, Psycho, if you if you feel like that, that's, that's too not high middle of the road. Or like too low. Middle 500 of the road. to 1,000 is, is like expensive. Yeah. But I mean, I get that because there's some people like, no, I'm not going to spend $500 on the guitar because if you think of it as an electric guitar, well... You, if you want to change the pickups, there's more money. Mm -hmm. If you need a cable, really nice cable for your really nice guitar, you need that. You want a really pretty strap, there's more money. If you want a really nice amp, there's more money. Now you're thinking pedals. What kind of pedals do you want? You know, you need a little extension, little cables to the pedals and the batteries. And the It just becomes a, a huge mess. So that well, can, that $500 guitar can end up costing you $1,000 in all the things that you add to it. I get that. That they could be like, that's pricey, but... Well, it's all about perspective, too. Yeah. 
Because that's just thing. I mean, your personal perspective is for you that might be expensive. Yeah. Right. And that's fine because it's you and it's yeah. your, you live in and your this universe. This is for me. I'm you like, live in the universe of you, but not everybody lives in your universe, you know? Yeah. I went through this. So I used to sell like really expensive furniture products. And I have people coming like, hey, how much is this bed? I'm like, well, it's, you know, they start at 800 bucks and go to 3,000 bucks. And some customers pop in and go, that's just too much. I'd never spend that much. I'm like, okay. Then someone else will walk around and how much are these things? I'm like, well, they start most affordable is 800. You know, most luxurious goes up to about 3,000. I'm like, wow, that's a really good deal. I, I thought it'd be more than that. Mm -hmm. Different people came in. I mean, the product, the price didn't change. The product didn't the change. The perspective of the person walking in the door was what the difference was, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it just kind of depends. But, you know, if you go look and see what brand new guitars are selling for, the ranges, mm -hmm. then yes, you'll find a $15,000 guitar sitting over here maybe, but that's... And not a lot of those getting sold. Right. There's a whole lot more two thousand dollars being sold than there are ten thousand dollar guitars being sold. Right. You know. But I'm sure that's how they justify it. That's kind of how I see it. Mm -hmm. You guys, let us know <laughs> what you think. What do you consider a mid price guitar? And then what do you think is entry level and what is top end? Because you can't right. have a mid price without a bottom and a top price. Right. Mm -hmm. Great question, man. Thanks, appreciate it. Yep. Final question, Big Yay! John from Flow Rida. Hashtag opossum. Hi, guys. I was hoping that you could settle a di disagreement between me and my wife. Never invite other people to settle disagreements with you and your wife. I'm just telling you. And that's a wrap. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for telling us. Yes. Sir. Always <laughs> settle the disagreements amongst yourselves. Yes. <laughs> but I continue on. About meatloaf. Like, I thought you meant like the like singer? dinner. Like, I am not a meatloaf fan. I'd oh, rather he have, is talking about singer. Yeah. I'd rather have chicken fried steak. Chicken fried steak is superior to meatloaf in every way, which we haven't had chicken fried steak in a while. Yeah. We're talking about the other day. Uh, I say he fits into the rock genre. My wife says, at best, music theater. What do you guys think? Is meatloaf rock or is he music theater? Oh, yeah. Meatloaf. He can do anything for love, but he won't do that. <laughs> I guess so. Um, He's kind of selfish. He is. So or that. Selfish. Or that. But um, I won't do anything. Anything really. Else. Um, I don't like, listen to Meatloaf. Honestly, that's the only song I know. <laughs> no, uh, off the yeah. top of my head, I'm sure I know more because he was really popular, especially in the early '90s. Briefly. Yeah. I don't know. That he's massively. I mean, I think he had, probably has a cult following of fans. Just yes. like it was like for a second, like him, Michael Bolton, Rod Stewart. Even Celine Dion at the early days, like they all had this like Brian Adams, everybody, like that that genre of like that kind of male mm. not Celine Dion, obviously. Well maybe. No. But um male singer ballad, weird, raspy rock voice, mm -hmm. like raspy rock voice. <laughs> none of them good looking. Like none of them were good looking. Not men. attractive. Not at all in any shape, form, or fashion, but all of them singing about love. Yeah. Oh, me in love with this button-down shirt, and he's just like in the wind-blown hair. You know. That was terrible. <laughs> he can sing though. You know. He has a great. He's not like a bad singer. You know. He, uh, I don't know. Oh, meatloaf. I, I would. Uh, I wouldn't call him rock. I would more. He's more like a pop. He's more a pop singer. Right. Like easy listening. Cause I wouldn't call it no rock. Plant. Yeah, because when I think of rock, I mean there's very iconic rock singers. When I say name a rock singer, what comes? Who, who James comes? Hetfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, James Hetfield. Um, I don't know who sang for Pandera. Phil Anselmo. Yeah, that's metal though. But it's still like rock. It's rock and roll. It's rock yeah. music. It's not country. You know. Right. I know it's heavy metal, but it's... Robert Plant? Yes. You know, Ozzy. That's... Yeah, those me, are rock singers. Those are rock singers. Or What's his face Steven from, Tyler. What's his face from The Who? Even Bon Jovi, I would think is... He's rock. You know. 80s rock. But, you know. Axl Rose. And... <laughs> yeah. He is. I mean, yeah. 
It's not a good thing here, but yeah, I didn't you, say good. Right. And I didn't say good for any of them. Right, I right, right. Said they're, they're Meat Loaf's not in your top list of rock singers. Not even in the wheelhouse of my thought. Him and Rod Stewart are about as rock, you, you know, they're about the same. Right. Is Rod Stewart rock? What about Sting? Sting's not a rock singer. No, Steve, Sting's easy listening. He's more like jazz. Jazz rock. Yeah. There you go. Well, easy he... listening is a genre, right? So Angel said he's not he's not a rocker. And I wouldn't necessarily call it musical theater. Musical theater to me is more like Josh Groban. Because everything that he sings sounds like it's from Broadway. Yeah. No, I mean, I guess like musical theater where it's almost like... So Meatloaf is like bad he's a, Broadway he's rock. He's like a joke kind of musical theater. Kind of like if you... Is that what she is that the kind of thought she has? I don't know. Like Parody it's, musical? Like, yeah, thing? like it's like a like a joke. I don't know. Like he's theatrical, like it's more pop and you know, than anything. He's you know, pompous rock. Pompous rock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think we're I don't know if we're helping or not, Big Oh. I definitely wouldn't call him rock, but I don't necessarily would call him music theater. So neither one Something of you get the point. <laughs> it's a tie. It's a tie. <laughs> it's a tie. But just tell her she's right and, you know, move on with life and be yes. happy. Yeah. Both of you. Just let her win. Yes. Let her win. Go. Hey. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Just yeah. suck it up. Let her win and go go. I on. really honestly hope that y'all aren't like diehard Meatloaf fans and we just insulted you completely because we're making fun of him. I apologize. Are we making fun of him though? I am. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm a little bit. Angela I've been laughing apologize. this whole time. Angela I was... apologizes. I I'm not really a fan. Like, you know. I've heard some of his songs that were came on the radio or the music videos or stuff, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's Meatloaf. Yeah. I never bought a record. Yeah. Never bought a single. What I would want to know what they think of as music theater. I'm, I'm really interesting, interested in thinking who falls in the category of music theater. What do you, you consider music theater? Yes. That is a good question. Exactly. Because I think of like, you know, like I said, like Josh Groban is music. He's theatrical. The Theater-esque. Yes. He has very a theatrical voice where it's just like, It could be Whoa. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. See, that's what I'm thinking of. Like every one of his songs could be on a... Like Les Mis album. Yeah. Or, you know. Mm-hmm. 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 Meatloaf, Snow, Josh Groban. Oh. <laughs> that's blasphemous. <laughs> what? I said, I said he's not. I know, but I... Just like, oh. oh. <laughs> Josh Groban's the best. I should say, are you, oh, Meatloaf fans are going to be mad. I know, at people are like, oh, I can't stand Josh Groban. Well, I feel bad for you. That's all right. You live a sad, sad life. <laughs> all right. And that's the final question. So thank you guys so much for all the questions this week. Appreciate it. Love it. Thanks for all the comments. If you have a question for next week, please leave it below. And uh, also, if you watch this whole stinking video, I don't even know how long it is. Probably really long. But uh, yeah. if you watch the whole thing, we got a secret hashtag of the day. And if you did watch it and listen to all of our answers... As varied as they are about animals and meatloaf yes. uh, and Disney, mm -hmm. then leave with your comment and or question. You can leave the okay. secret hashtag of the day. It lets us know you watch the whole thing. Just gives us an idea because we don't know exactly who watches all of it. Some people watch two minutes. Some people watch 60 seconds. Yeah. Some people watch the whole hour. And we love you more if you watch the whole hour. Yes. But the secret hashtag of the day is hashtag Mando. Yeah. Hey. Hashtag Mando. Yes. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think about uh, the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. I I'm looking forward to watching the next episode. So like, I, I yeah. wouldn't say that I don't hate. I don't hate it. Yes. I don't think it's crap. I, I think maybe I wanted a little bit more, but maybe a little bit more is going to unfold as it goes. I wish the episodes were longer. Mm. That's the thing. I think I feel like the episodes yeah. are too short. Honestly, yeah. after you know watching like The Walking Dead, especially or something. yeah, mm -hmm. like they could be. An I hour. think because people want good Star Wars so bad, they're like, we can make it shorter, people are still going to watch it. Truth. And if you leave them wanting more, that's probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. But That's true. That's yeah. true. Hashtag Mando. And we will uh, see you guys in the next Arnie Music video. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. The music needs you. You need the music. And we need to keep it alive for the next generation. And this generation. Of meatloaf lovers. And our lovers. generation.
in our generation. Yes. If you want an RNA music t shirt, to meatloaf. we have our limited run Force T RNA shirt. You can go in the description down Hashtag below. Mando. There is a link to our Teespring store. Yay. You can get your RNA music shirt and uh, go show your support. I am going to go see the next Star Wars movie. I'm prepared to hate it, but I'm going to go watch it yes. knowing that I'm going to hate it. Yes, he's going to go without me. And we can talk about it afterwards. So Sure. I'm all, all right. fine with spoilers. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.